Most of us know a little something about Alzheimer's disease. We may be able to indicate what common traits are existent between individuals with Alzheimer's, and we may even have an idea of the struggles family members of Alzheimer's patients encounter. We also may have a good grasp on the fact that Alzheimer's primarily affects older adults. What we may not understand is just how common this disease is becoming and how much of an impact this disease will have on our future. According to the Centers for Disease Control, Alzheimer's is the most common form of dementia. Disturbing daily life, Alzheimer's affects the portions of the brain that control memory, behavior, and thought. Alzheimer's disease is a progressive disease, meaning the symptoms become more pronounced over time. There are several factors that contribute to the development of this disease. These include age, family history or genetics, previous head trauma, and bad overall health. While at this time there is not a cure for Alzheimer's, much research has been done in the treatment of symptoms. Other research is found in the form of clinical trials. Both pharmacological and non-pharmacological studies are being conducted across the country. Unfortunately, the prognosis for Alzheimer's patients is grim. The average length of time one lives after symptoms of Alzheimer's disease are noticed is eight years. It is for this reason that Alzheimer's comes in at sixth in the leading causes of death for the United States, ranking higher than diabetes and influenza-related deaths. The key to being best prepared for this disease is understanding the symptoms. Symptoms of Alzheimer's disease vary depending on the stage. Symptoms include difficulty learning new information, disorientation, changes in mood, behavioral changes, difficulties in understanding time and place, suspicions regarding family members or caretakers, and most severely, problems with speaking, swallowing, and walking. It's Bingo Friday! I need my wallet if I'm gonna drive there. I'm going to be late. <sighs> Better call Maggie. Hello? Yeah, I'm going to be late for Beto. I need you to come pick me up. Thanks for hurrying, I really appreciate it. Okay, love you too. Bye. Hey, Dad, what's this doing in there? What? What is your wallet doing in the fridge? Once family members have noticed concerning differences or changes in their loved ones, they should seek the counsel of a medical professional. This medical professional will be able to help with a diagnosis. All right, Daniel, so your daughter has come to me with some concerns about the state of your mental health. She believes you may be developing Alzheimer's or some other form of dementia. And after listening to some symptoms she brought forth, um, you seem to be displaying some memory loss that's disrupting your daily life. You're having difficulty com completing familiar tasks at home, and there's some confusion with time or place, and these are all definitely early symptoms to Alzheimer's. So I think she has some valid reasoning behind her concerns. 
and I believe it would be worthwhile to go through the diagnosis process and we can also check for other disorders that may be causing um, these symptoms too. So it's not for sure yet that you do have Alzheimer's. And so I'd just like to run you through the process we'll be going through um, in order to diagnose you. First, I'll ask you a series of questions just to get a quick evaluation of any mental problems and this will allow us to develop a plan of treatment for you. We'll also give you a mini mental state exam and this just gives insight into whether there has been damage to the brain or not. It tests your problem solving skills, attention span, counting skills, and memory. You'll also need a physical exam just to help um, for any form of treatment to help make sure the treatment plan we give you is right for your state of health. And you'll also receive a chest x-ray, a lab test for your bodily fluids and tissues, and a ECG, which records the heart's electrical activity. And what these three tests do is they'll check for any other possible disorders that may be causing these symptoms. And so we can rule out any other disorders before we even check for Alzheimer's. You'll also receive a CT scan and an MRI, and these give imagings of your brain so we can um, see if there's been any, anything wrong with your brain, any changes, any atrophy, which would be the shrinkage of your brain, and also an EEG, which measures your brain function, and at the end, a neuropsychological test, which shows the relationship between your brain and behavior. This consists of interviews, behavioral tests, assessments of personality and emotional stability. So it's a long process, but we want to make sure we don't misdiagnose you and make sure we get it right because this is a serious condition. So do you have any questions before we begin? Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's go take these tests now. According to the Family Caregiver Alliance, Alzheimer's disease is a family disease because the chronic stress of watching a loved one slowly decline affects everyone. Adjusting to a life after a diagnosis of Alzheimer's has many challenges. So we decided as a family to take him in and keep him as long as possible in his home so at least he could remember as long as possible who he was and who I was. It's hard. It's an emotionally and physically taxing job taking care of a family member. I either have to quit my job soon or I'm going to have to put him in a care home. It's really hard him waking up day by day not knowing who I am, his own daughter. I have to remind him every day who he is and who I am. It's like watching a slow death. Alzheimer's is a horrible disease. It's nothing that you can ever imagine. Once an individual has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, a decision has to be made on what will be the best option for the treatment of the patient. Caregiving options must also be assessed. Here at Broad Horizons, we care for individuals in the moderate to severe stages of Alzheimer's disease. Um, at these stages, uh, individuals require 24-hour assistance in both daily activities as well as uh, medical care. Um, although all 
patients are unique and require personalized care. Many patients in this, these stages of the disease require 24-hour assistance and choose to live in nursing facilities that, require, or that provide such care. Um, such facilities can cost upwards of fifty to eighty thousand dollars per year. Prior to these stages, however, individuals may choose to maintain more of their independence by other options such as living with a family member to care for them when only when they need it, or um, live in nurses to provide assistance a few hours a day up to 24 hours a day as a live-in nurse. The cost of such care is anywhere from $20 a day to $250 um, depending on the amount of care given. Regardless of which mode of care the individual receives, there are a few basic techniques that need to be followed by the caregiver. Such techniques include um, scheduling certain activities that may be more stressful or upsetting to the individual at times of the day that the individual is more agreeable. Um, these activities would include bathing or doctor's visits. Caregivers of Alzheimer's disease patients also need to monitor their medication. Um, such medications would include Aricept and Exelon for mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease and Nemenda for moderate to severe Alzheimer's disease. Um, such medications may be covered by Medicaid or other insurance providers. Um, these medications do not cure Alzheimer's disease, but are, have been proven to slow the progression of memory loss associated with the disease. Other medications that may be prescribed to the patient could include those associated with um, depression, restlessness, anxiety, and aggression, which are other symptoms associated with the disease in its more advanced stages. But regardless of all these care options, the caregivers most crucial role is to ensure that the patient maintains their dignity and independence as long as is safe and as possible. Let's look to the future and at specifically the impacts Alzheimer's has on our country. As of right now, there are more than 5 million people living with the disease. This is expected to increase to 7.1 million by 2025. By 2050, the projected number of individuals with Alzheimer's disease is close to 13.8 million. This increase in the number of individuals afflicted with Alzheimer's poses serious threats for our economy. For 2013, $203 billion is the price tag for the direct cost of caring for those with Alzheimer's. This is expected to rise to $1.2 trillion by 2050. The Alzheimer's Association adds, over the next 40 years, caring for people with Alzheimer's and related dementias will cost $20 trillion, enough to pay off the national debt and still send $10,000 to every man, woman, and child in America. In conclusion, Alzheimer's disease has a large impact, not just on the individuals themselves, but the families and friends of the individual, the caregivers of the Alzheimer's patients, and in the largest sense, the entire nation.